Hello and welcome to another very exciting dialogue with my dear friend Bruno in Canada. And Bruno has, out of interest and out of necessity, created a new relationship with nature, with eating, with planting, and with simply being creative to be in nature. And for me, that is exciting. For me, that is interesting. So today we're going to explore different things again. Emerging archetypes are really getting out of the old. For some people, we have sicknesses and experiences that have held us in a, in a trap, that have held us in a mindset that limited us and didn't allow us to be in harmony with nature and, of course, with ourselves. So everybody has their own background, but the need, and the need is not something bad because the need can transform into an amazing potential that we can't even imagine. And this is what I want to have a dancing dialogue with Bruno today. So Bruno, the need for you to eat differently, to go into the country, to create a relationship with nature has brought you here. And today we're looking at what are we actually eating? What are we actually doing? So that was fascinating to me. You came out of a conversation before we started today with people who are building an earthship. So let's start with that. I used to be crazy about earthship. I thought that was what I wanted in my life. What is your experience? What was your conversation today? How is that relevant for stepping out of this old mindsets entrapments that we have all been living in and how do we open up that new space well <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> to give you a better perspective on on my personality i believe in things that people um, not necessarily generally accept easily to to start exploring and so I, i've known a lot of resistance towards things i believe in and over the years but now it's changing rapidly so talking to a friend that was going uh, through a difficult time recently with a partner that had that passed from cancer we were talking about matters of the heart and how to communicate perhaps with the deceased how do we have an open heart conversation with the deceased? One thing led to the next. That person says, oh, have you met these people? What people are we talking about? Now, we're here dropping our kids to school at this point. And now you've got a bunch of parents starting engaging in a conversation about talking to the deceased, healing their heart, and then introducing other people that are so close to the values of protecting the earth and make the best of our time on this matrix that they are coming up with creative solutions using very simple means to achieve wonders by building earth ships mm -hmm. i mean i'm not saying an earth ship is the perfect structure for every circumstance but you know what if that's your dream and you have the passion for it you have the time and it fits your needs why not hey i want to hear about what passionate you're passionate about it might help me. So I told them I wanted to build with sea containers on my land in the future, not so distant future. And I say, one problem I haven't resolved that the earth ship have figured out is I, I don't want to drill a well. I want to collect my rainwater. But, you know, in Canada, where I'm at, we have minus 40s in the winter. So that means it better be well insulated because if your water freeze, you're going to have problems, mm -hmm. right? But the earth ship figured that out, you know, they figured those issues. And these people just happen to have calculated exactly how many tanks I need to have enough water so I can actually never run out. And I say, but what do you do in the winter when you can't replenish with rainwater? Oh, but we have a thawing process, you know, we, we have a meltdown process that replenish the tanks in a matter of hours. You wait for a big snowfall, you melt it down, off we go. I'm like, wow, you just resolved my issues in one little conversation. Not only that, now I'm invited Friday to go 
get their teaching on their land to show me live. And that's going to resolve a lot of my um, uh, engineering issues that I, I will face for myself due to the fact that I made conscientious choice to not go the traditional way about living. Yes. And it, one thing leads to the next. You know, here we are uh, having this wonderful dancing dialogue. Um, I don't know what the rest of my day will bring to me, but <laughs> we'll find out. Next time we'll, we'll talk, we'll, you'll have more interesting details for me, I'm sure. Yeah, isn't that just fascinating? And, and, and this is really also the purpose of dancing dialogue. You have something and that sparks something else. Now, mm -hmm. as you see, I'm wearing a T-shirt with a heart today. This is the only T-shirt with a heart I have. Fully, it says, I love Peru, and under it says, chocolate. Maybe I need to show <laughs> So it says, I love Peru and chocolate. Now, m my whole work work is also difficult because people resisting the path of the heart. This is what mm. I'm about. I feel if you can't get out of your mind and into the heart or bring your mind into the heart, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. And I love how life, when you're open enough and don't resist, presents itself that you would have a conversation with people about talking to the ones who are in another dimension who have transition and how that happens for the from the heart and how I do that. This is part of my work, not something that I publicize a lot, but this is part of what I'm doing. And that would bring you to the Earthship. Mm -hmm. And that would bring you to a solution that is more, a, more than a, a, a solving a problem. It is actually connecting with earth and what is there to understand how things work mm -hmm. and for me that is fabulous so you're gonna have now a life experience how this can work for you and your container and i feel this is where the magic is so dancing dialogue is also about magic because we're connecting things and look mm -hmm. what is happening and of course having water is something very essential and relying on the pipe from the from the council or the water works or whatever to make sure when you open the water you actually get water i don't feel this is enough anymore and for many people they start thinking about that mm -hmm. so we are living also in a time where we start rethinking so what do i do if i switch on the the crown and there's nothing there's nothing so what am i doing where am i getting the water from mm -hmm. there is questions what if i switch on my power and there is no power so i feel we're starting living in a different relationship and of course what concerns the two of us not in the sense of worrying for me so much is what am i eating Yes. I'm plant-based for over 12 years. I have my good exceptions and I have a good source of organic produce. I have my parsley. The oregano didn't make it, but says he's still working with the lavender. So we are, we are looking at eating as pure as possible. We don't do processed food and all of that. But at the end of the day, we are challenged, all of us at the moment, what do we mm -hmm. eat? And here you yes. tell me about dandelion. Would you like to share more about dandelion? Well, what I understand here uh, in Canada, it was imported by the Europeans. It was their garden plant uh, of choice because it's a tough plant. It grows pretty much anywhere in the world. As long as you've got a bit of sunlight and the ground doesn't freeze completely all the time, it will grow. And so it's good to decompact the soil. It brings the nutrients from deep down on the ground to the surface, the calciums, uh, a lot of minerals, vitamins. It gives you vitamins A to D at least uh, for yourself. <laughs> you, you know, people buy supplement. Why don't you put that in your salad? Funny thing is they sell it at a grocery store, but then people buy around up to get rid of it in their backyard. I'm like... Um, Okay, Let, let's think in terms of conservation of energy, right? Because if you got to spend money on something to get rid of what you think is a problem, 
That means you got to work to earn that money. That means you got to spend energy somewhere. I'm lazy or I don't have the luxury to be expending so much energy all the time because I simply don't have that capacity anymore. So I will compare that to, let's say I'm lazy because I, I don't want to. I don't have to. Let's not do it. How can I get by my uh, to fulfill my needs? Well, I believe nature does things in complete ways. We have water pumping stations. Meanwhile, nature uses cloud systems. Mm -hmm. Rain falls. It pretty much touches every inches of every continent eventually. Now, if you're creative, you go to where it falls best and where it feels your needs best and you build cistern system. So you don't have to drill wells. Yeah. Why wouldn't you drill wells? Because why would you disturb what's going on underground if you don't have to? Why would you risk contaminating that underground source or disturbing what's going on geologically underneath? Maybe that's meant to be undisturbed. Mm -hmm. I feel what you are, for me, I'm not engineering, I'm not into facts, I'm totally in my heart, artist, all this kind of stuff. What you are saying to me is resonance. I don't need to even think about it because it just makes sense. It resonates with me. Why mm -hmm. am I interfering with nature if I can collaborate with nature? Exactly. It's so, it's so absolutely natural. And I think this is where we are going. The old things are dying one way or another. Our old experiences, our old life, the way we have been harming and destroying nature, the earth, whatever. When we understand and when we observe nature, and, and something that you also say very beautifully, when we understand the full cycle of nature, then many things can be easy. As you said, can I, I give you an example of something that is very close to you right now that the world knows of because it's part of the world wonders okay you know what's in peru that's still standing after so many thousands of years you mean plenty of ruins or what do you yeah think? and they're it's still standing in pretty good shape mm -hmm. huh? for no maintenance building all that time the terracement system haven't collapsed. No. So that tells me two things. They master the art of building, dealing with earthquakes. Okay, that's a big one. We have a hard time engineering houses that sustain earthquakes nowadays. Oh, unless you got a big wallet. What about no wallet still standing? You can find materials of the land, just build differently and boom, voila. You marry with the earth, you merge with the earth, and yeah. the earth then protects you. Exactly. That's my goal, is to use what earth has to offer right. to my benefit. Not benefit in terms of greed, no. but benefits in terms of quality of life, quality of time spent here. In terms of what I can learn and how I can grow with it and become a more beautiful being as a result. Yes. That's what is valuable here. And in some parts, like here, we still build like that. They put stones at the bottom of the house to get the stability. Okay, they use some cement, but well, cement is not. No, that it's okay. Natural. It's okay. And on top, they build with something they call kincha. And kincha is basically earth, but inside this earth, there's a fermentation of I don't know what. And actually, when they had a big earthquake here many years ago, we didn't live here then. The, kin the good Kincha houses, they still stood. What fell apart oh. was, of course, all the other constructions. Wow. So what you're saying is really that we have lost that connection to work with Earth. Not yes. in the sense of these are my resources and I need to manage them, but how to be in harmony. Mm -hmm. it's Mother like Earth has pretty much a, a, a system of regeneration mm -hmm. for resource if you don't abuse it exactly so in the bronze era 
the abuser system, Great Lakes appear, right? Interestingly enough. Now, as a result, all that metal is scattered all over the place, senselessly, and, but is it a bad thing? Perhaps no, that's the earth way to rescatter it so it can give those same elements to other places on the planet. However, us in terms of human life and how we've been living, a hundred years is not quite enough to see those cycles come complete in nature. The water regeneration cycle of the planet is about a thousand years in the oceans. hundred years, you're not going to see much of it happen before your eyes. I, you know, so I'm thinking practical solutions here for, for our modern world and how can we reconnect more easily without needing an engineering degree, without needing a, all that, that stuff that basically at the end of the day, that it's great. It shows that you've spent time maturing subjects, but now I, I've seen people in the jungle do wonders in terms of constructions. Yes, definitely. <laughs> and I'm questioning the very validity of, of wanting to, to, to put credential behind everything yes. instead of putting actual life experience, real, true, meaningful life experience. And being in harmony with the intelligence of nature, maybe. Yes. About bringing that engineer. It's not about engineers. I, I love engineers. They're very beautiful. Yes. People. It's not about that, but some engineering is trying to tell nature how to work. Yes, so playing God. But what if we understand the intelligence of the earth, the regeneration and all of that, and not the progress that we think as humanity we should have, mm -hmm. and just flow with that. Yeah. Recently, we were following a very interesting that was a discussion because somebody wanted to be right and the other had thought no what it was all about and this man he said that so beautifully and he knows about this he's a he's an agriculture agriculture and botanist or whatever mm -hmm. but he said it's very interesting we talk about water but actually the water level of the earth has not changed we do have as much water as we had 100 years ago <laughs> but, so Right. So what happened to that same water that is becoming so rare is it has to do with how we used it and abused it. Exactly. There's nothing wrong with the water. It's so no. <laughs> but if you create a Hoover Dam to create a few gigawatts of power because some people want to watch TV. And you're going to go risk destroying an entire ecosystem. They don't even comprehend the intricacies of the fragile balance it brings to the entire continent. Exactly. Well, you can expect some surprise down the road. Go find out what's going on with the Colorado River now in the United States. Okay. Hmm? It's not very pretty. No. But that's alarming when we look at it in that perspective and see all oh, human damaged stuff. What about repairing? Yes, and I feel... The same United States... They have projects, they yeah. use material of the earth, like logs, rocks, and, and, and very basic ways of rejigging waterways to let them replenish their aquifer over time. In India, they do it by hand, uh -huh. completely by hand, no tractors, just by hand. The farmers have a contest once a year, and it's a big thing. So they're making rapid progress because everyone is getting involved yes. and they have a different respect because when you put your hands onto something when you build your own home you respect your home differently of course. when you build your own field that you grow food out of you don't look at it the same way mm -mm. you don't go play motocross over it after you so you, you sold your carrots because you know you ain't gonna eat after it. exactly so we're gonna talk about that as well but it is important because you're a light worker and so am I. And we are obviously also seeing the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. This whole planet and the whole universe is going through a change. All of this in a way needs to happen to break down the old, the Piscean age and bringing us into the Aquarian age. And maybe mm -hmm. all these things need to happen for waking up and for making that shift back 
into harmony with nature. And so let's bring it back home. We talk already about the dandelion. So imagine, maybe you don't eat spinach or whatever you're eating from the supermarket, but you eat dandelion. Okay. This is where the change starts. Yes. And I brought my little sponge again. It's called, what did we say, Ufa? No. Lufa, yeah, that's what Ufa. we call it here. Yeah, it is. It, it grows here in the region as well. And I think it grows in many places. So we found out now that you can eat that, but nobody eats it here because they forgot it. So when it's green, you can eat it. It's food. As mm. it dries like that, it's full of seeds, so you can plant it. So it's food, and we have been using that for a long time for the body scrub in the shower. Yes. But now I also use it for my sponge to clean my dishes. Yes. So when we bring all of this home into a practical sense, and as you said, when we take now the pleasure and the enthusiasm and the new creativeness and the harmony with nature and what is actually happening on a bigger scale, then we are creating different things. And we want to look at now what you have created, because you said this gives us also an opportunity to build our own, to have our mm -hmm. own food. You don't need hectares of land in order to have something to eat. And from last time, we wanted also to talk about the animals. So you shared a beautiful photo with us that we want to share now. And this is, we're going to have it in a second. Now, where is this one here? This is what you have for your chicken. So in harmony with nature, of course, nature doesn't only have plants. Nature has animals of all different kinds, the crowley ones that are sometimes more difficult, the chickens that you have, they have the mammals, of course, the goats and whatever. But share with us what the chickens do when you start having your own land, not only for production of food, but to regenerate, to come back into harmony. So I guess initially we have to ask ourselves uh, we, we got to look into uh, this dynamic here. We put stuff in the mouth. Mm -hmm. It gets digested. It feeds the body. But eventually something comes out. Yes. Everything we do as a living being generates trash of some sort. Mm -hmm. When we generate natural trash through the digestive tract, then it can be recycled in nature in, in a natural way. It's fairly easy to do. Where it becomes a problem is when there's over saturation or over abundance of one thing in any one area. Mm -hmm. How do we close those loops is the question. And how do we close them in a balanced way where it will not create a bigger problem for nature to solve later on over a more extended period of time? My idea is, you know, at the moment, we're looking at a, a hundred years of somewhat quality life on this planet. We might as well make the best out of it. We don't have a thousand years to appreciate uh, nature to regenerate the water cycle around the oceans. So when I develop a model, I try to factor in my actual needs, not my needs based on my greed, but my needs based on my consumption needs and my actual needs to sustain myself alive in a comfortable way mm -hmm. what's comfortable it's just do i have enough food to get by every day without running out of energy to perform the tasks that i need to perform mm -hmm. that's my actual needs anything in excess of that it just gets me bigger if it gets me bigger then i don't really have those needs i'm storing food senselessly so at that point, I had to come up with a reasonable amount of livestock and this establish how much livestock can be supported by how much patch of land. That was a little ratio I had to figure out. So here is an example of two chicken coops. They are mobile. 
reason for that is because I didn't I didn't want to have a rat problems. Okay. You keep anything static for too long, you got too much accumulation of certain food on the ground, and then it attracts the rats and and the little rodents. Mind you, the chicken will eat a lot of them, but it can also become a source of disease spreading. So to avoid that, and we do things like nature does it. Nothing stays static in nature. Even the vegetation moves around the planet. Mm -hmm. So why would I have static coops? Makes no sense to me. And I had the luxury of having a nice large yard. So I made mobile coops. I have two different flocks because two different types of chicken. One is meat chicken. The other one is just egg laying. Mm -hmm. But they're also delicious to eat, but it's just smaller chicken. So it's not as much meat on them. Uh, because I had them separated, I use what humans are used to. I, I, I use a calendar idea, you know, the grid on the calendar. Okay. I apply that idea to my backyard. And now I did large enclosures, but because of the time of the year, they need more space. But I usually give them fairly amount, a uh, fair amount of space like that, but they'll spend up to a week or two in those large enclosures before they get moved again. Okay. So I can keep my birds rotating around the backyard for the entire summer, if I do it in a organized fashion, like a calendar every day you're in the different grid square or every so many days, uh, then I can respect the root genera regeneration cycle of the grass, which is what support that earth to not erode and brings life because it retains the water that supports all the critters that eventually supports my chicken. Mm -hmm. so we're closing the loop the chicken eats food there they leave dropping producing more food for the plants that are there for the next time that they're going to come by then they're going to have more critters in the mix my eggs yolk is more orange than ever it's fantastic as a result i eat better my health is better and my backyard looks better now sure chicken makes holes here and there they need dust bat but you know I'd rather spend five minutes patching a hole here and there by using a, a, a rake just to recover the earth and, and forbid the chicken to overgraze that spot next time by protecting that spot, perhaps, to let it heal. Because then the land always look better, the trees look fantastic, and everything become more abundant. As a result, my plant medicine that grows in the backyard, like plantain, mullens, and a bunch of other plants, uh, are growing phenomenally well. And, and the dandelion that was so busy in the backyard years ago is practically inexistent now because the soil is rebalanced. Now, where I lose dandelions as a source of food, I gain chicken with higher nutrient value okay. in return. So I'm like, okay, well, fine, whatever. I'll, uh, I lose here, I gain there. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. So this, this is what we're talking about, closing the loop, working with the intelligence and the creativeness, the power to create of nature. Mm -hmm. This is what you're doing. Yes. And you're tuning in and you're flowing with that. Yes. And many of us can do that. And some people eat chicken and eggs and some people eat the dandelion. You know, it, it depends also what is your food intake. So for instance, mm -hmm. I don't eat chicken or eggs. So for me, the dandelion would be more important, but it doesn't mean I shouldn't have any animals. There is other ways. So what I really love, and this for me is also what you're saying about nature. Nature is dynamic. It's not only one way or the highway. Exactly. There, there is many, many options. and. Yeah. We are all invited, I feel, at this time to find our own way. And for that, I would like to show actually... Your... Just a little bracket before we switch over the next picture, Patrick. Yes. That setup you saw was there, uh, is there to support three dwelling. Wow. So the matter was, how do we create social connections strong enough to make this system viable? Mm -hmm. So no one feels overworked. No backyard has been overgrazed. And everyone can reap the benefit, including the birds, to begin with, because the birds have to be happy. Mm -hmm. If the birds are not happy, 
what we eat is not going to be tasting the same or as nutritious. Exactly. Thank you for adding that because I feel this is important. This is not about us going out somewhere in the bush, living on our own. This is about us starting to come together. It doesn't need to be a formal community. A community is simply to come together and work together and share. Yes. And this is what you're also doing. So it brings us together as these new instead of competing on our product and our chicken or size or whatever you have chosen to collaborate and this is yes. definitely one of the new things that we are doing as emerging archetypes because this is what nature is doing nature is collaborative do you know how the birds behave as a result of this little collaboration between different dwellings exactly everyone feeds the birds uh-huh interns and they bring their food scraps so when they cook they leave a lot of food scraps well there's certain things we don't give to the chicken because it would prevent them from laying eggs but aside from that whatever they can have they get as a result when there are people taking hikes in front of the the, the house here mm -hmm. to go on a nature trail the chicken run towards the people <laughs> they don't run away from the people they run towards the people Right. doesn't matter stranger or not they always expect people to bring them food <laughs> they're so happy to see people they associate people with food uh when Isn't that we, amazing yeah when we step out of our our <laughs> place the, the neighbors everybody has chicken but chicken don't get fed by everybody they, they're not running away they're running away from us in a way because there's a dog on the property yeah. that we are on and of course the dogs are chasing so they don't get too close to us, the chicken, but how beautiful. And how much does that really bring people together? So now exactly. we're gonna look at another thing that came out of your beautiful work, I want to say, collaboration. All right. Have it on. So everyone's used to the straight carrots in the bag, right? It only happens when you grow it in loose soil. If you really, really grow in, 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 in a way that is uh, less damaging, if you don't till, um, you will end up with results like this. That, is, that used to be common. Mm -hmm. uh, if you start plucking your carrots out and, and start like working your ground, it, it creates more work for you to do. That's okay. Some people have the time and the pleasure to do it. Uh, Sometimes we don't have time. So if you don't have time, you may likely end up with a result like this. Now, this is packed with nutrient. Look at the orange color of it and how bright and shiny it is. That was coming right out of the ground, okay? That carrot is happy, has lots of goodness, and it's very soft taste. It's not bitter. Uh, but it does not look aesthetically the same as the one you buy in the uh, grocery stores. And people have forgotten what a carrot looks like for what I've heard. So I wanted to show people what a carrot should look like when you yeah. grow it in different conditions. It will try to find a path of least resistance. So it, this is not uncommon. This is not an abomination of nature. This is actually the beautifulness of nature adapting to the ground it's growing in, yeah. delivering you with the best packed nutrient food it can find. So if you help nature to develop more nutrient per patch of land, then you end up with better food. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. And of course, it's welcome back to how you, how you prepare the earth. You don't dig the earth. You don't do all these kind of things. You actually allow the earth to be the earth. Yes. You put all the mulching stuff on it and all of that. And so the plants like this beautiful carrot have their own way to find their way and yes. what a beautiful carrot of course what is even not me more interesting no but i love to see the green on the carrot because the greens go usually in my green shoes and here it's almost impossible to get that mm. but i feel you know some regions they grow this and some regions grow something else but it doesn't mean that you can't grow what is good for you. You know, sometimes we feel we need this endless variety of food, but maybe not. If carrots grow well your way and they don't grow so well here, 
but I have other things that grow here and nutrition is not limited to I don't know carrots and and whatever there is dandelion there is the sponge here there's many other things that we have forgotten so for yes. me that is also another thing don't be afraid that things look different and don't worry that certain things grow, don't grow where you are it doesn't mean nothing is growing that actually is good for you Beautiful. here's a trick i developed over the time uh, to cope with the fear of lack. So let's say you have a yard, it's mostly asphalt. Mm -hmm. You may have a couple of trees. If you have trees, you can use the base of the trees to grow some food. You can grow shrubs that give you fruits, or you can grow things like carrot, potatoes, or other veggies. And it's amazing what will grow at the base of a tree beautifully. But now, don't expect the same result as what they do in the big chain store. And it's okay. Because just when you, you take for, I take the example of ginseng a lot. Because people are, are they connecting easily with that one. You buy ginseng at a grocery store. It tastes one thing. It has so many good properties. And then you find wild ginseng. And everyone swears by it because, oh, it's so much better. Why is it better? Because it has grown in a natural way. You know, it, it hasn't been a, a, a push for production. So now you have different properties to the same plant. It's the same plant, but different properties because of growing conditions. So I try to remember that in my approach. I couldn't find a medicine that healed me correctly in the conventional world. I had to find an equivalent in nature. I don't have luxury to go to 20 years of chemistry classes and biology class to be able to synthesize what I need. Is there another way? Perhaps I asked the wrong question. Is there another way? So if so, what, what does that way look like? And how can I simplify it so I can't believe that the Incas were able to perform medical interventions and, and have a healthcare system. And, and today we're like, well, well, it's new. We created this. No, no, come on. Egyptians were performing brain surgeries already. Like, come on. Yeah. So what, what does it take to be able to care for one another? A mother can deliver a child and without any qualification can give basic care to life and nurture that life to come to fruition yep. in a natural way. So maybe I did not observe correctly my surrounding. If I have dilemma how I do things, maybe I asked the wrong question. Maybe I have to ask a different question. So I use in the military to, 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 to carry with me a first aid kit everywhere I go. Now I show my son how to use the plantain, a little uh, plant that grows in the driveways with large leaves. And I showed him how to use that effectively. So when you have a bee stings or a scratch or a scrape or whatever bleeding and, and or uh, other kind of skin reactions, anyway, I showed him how to use it and, and we all use it. I, I turn it into anointment using beeswax and olive oil and we swear by it. We yeah, replace all first aid kit by that. Yeah. And it grows again almost everywhere. It grows here in the jungle too. He goes to the beach and he, he doesn't bring first aid kit. He, anywhere, it's crazy. Imagine that. So now we have more freedom, more quality of life. All I taught him to do is observe in your surrounding, look around, look at the ground. What plants do you have available for your needs? Yeah. So in the winter, we have vitamin C issue deficiency because uh, sunlight hour goes down and, and people start feeling down and... You know, we have a plant that grows profusely in Canada and that, that is more packed than what we can uh, in vitamin C than we can find in a lot of products. It, it's called pine. And, and the pine, the tree, the needles. Yes. You can nibble the needles. They have vitamins. You can eat the needles. Yeah. And it's rich in pinene, which is a turpin that is extremely beneficial to us. Right. Also found in cannabis and other plants. Exactly. Anyway, just food for thought. So I thought one year, okay, got the flu, don't feel so good. I feel run down. Okay, go to the backyard, grab some pine needles, start nibbling, make a tea, whatever. I start feeling better. Wow, oh my God. What else can I do? Yes. So dandelion was their answer to 
not having quality lettuce coming to the grocery store. Yeah. It's already like decaying. So now you're not going to eat that. And so because we have a, by the time the, the goods are getting here, it's been in transport truck for so long and often it has frostbites on it. So it makes the leaf turn bad quick. So now I was tired of that situation. I said, I need fresh food every day. I want to make a salad for one year. I kid you not. I did not buy an ounce of salad anywhere. I just yeah. turned to the backyard. Nice. I had a kale, shard, dandelion, all those plants. Exactly. So this is really where I feel we want to finish it because we don't want to do it too long so people actually get maybe to the end. I really want to finish it here and say it's time to ask different questions. Yes. It's time to realize luck does not exist. This earth is very bountiful and abundant when we have the sense and the ability to look outside the normal. So you don't get vitamin C while well, you have your pine needles. I get a lot of vitamin C because fruits that have a lot of vitamin C grow here all the time, whether it's the little cherries or we have vitamin C really in abundance here. But maybe we don't have other things in abundance. But we have the plantain as well as a, as a medicine plant. We have other things. So I feel this is a real invitation, invitation to look beyond the lack that really only exists in our mind. Talk to people like Bruno. Talk to people who are not maybe the total expert in this. But talk to people who know. There is always something that nurtures you and then comes directly from earth, not from a big plantation or a big place where they just push production. Mm. Yes, Bruno, it was exciting. I love it. Thank you so much Thank for you. making it today. You're welcome and thank so, you for inviting me. Pleasure. I hope people enjoy that as well. And of course, we are excited to get some comments and hear more from others how it works for them so thank you very much for being here and i see you thank you